It has now emerged that France is the force behind Chad's recent request for United States troops that are stationed at the RG Kosse Air Base near N'Djamena to be kicked out of the Chadian territory ahead of U.S. withdrawal of its troops from Niger. According to reports by three French media outlets, that is France 24, Le Monde, and TV5 Monde, France is pressuring Chad to refuse welcoming U.S. troops from Niger should Pentagon seek to redeploy them to the airbase, which only has around 100 American forces as of today. The French media outlets have reported that Emmanuel Macron's administration fears that the American withdrawal from Niger could lead to a transfer, or rather redeployment of U.S. troops to Chad in the coming months. That consequently, such a redeployment could threaten France's interests in the Sahel region, and therefore Paris has resorted to putting pressure on authorities in N'Djamena to refuse welcoming those American troops. And as such, it's believed that the April 4, 2024 letter by the Chadian Air Force Chief of Staff, Amin Ahmed Idris, in which he revealed that he had suspended activities of the U.S. Special Operations Force at RG Kosse Air Base, and subsequently called on the Chadian Defense Minister to initiate a process for the U.S. military to be kicked out of Chad, was actually done with the influence of France. Amidst these developments, the United States seems to be bowing to pressure, and has announced that it will partially redeploy some of its troops from Chad, to an unnamed friendly partner country in Africa, but with speculations pointing at Mauritania. That is going by the recent meetings between American and Mauritanian authorities, with the latest high-profile one being that of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and the Mauritanian Foreign Affairs Minister Mohamed Salem Old Merzok, on April 18, 2024, on the sidelines of the G7 Foreign Ministers Summit in Capri, Italy. While speaking in a briefing of April 25, the Pentagon Press Secretary Major General Pat Ryder said that the United States wishes to continue with its counter-violent extremist organizations' operations in West Africa, so as to safeguard its interests, and those of its partners, but going by the recent developments in Chad, it will temporarily reduce its military personnel from the RG Kosse Air Base, as it waits for Chad's electoral process to install a new government. And that, once a new government has come into effect, after those May 6 elections, then talks on how to proceed with a robust security partnership with Chad will be resumed, with the Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell traveling to the Sahel region in the coming months. Switching gears to Africa, as you've seen, the U.S. State Department announced U.S. Ambassador to Niger Kathleen Fitzgibbon and Major General Kenneth Ekman, U.S. Africa Command Director of Strategy, Engagement and Programs, will meet with the National Council for Safeguarding the Homeland uh, officials today in Yemi, Niger, to initiate discussions on an orderly and safe withdrawal of U.S. forces from Niger. Subsequently, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Special Operations and Low-Intensity Conflict Christopher Mayer and Lieutenant General Dagman Anderson, Joint Staff Director for Joint Force Development, will conduct follow-up meetings uh, in Niamey next week to coordinate the withdrawal process in a transparent manner and with mutual respect. We'll be sure, of course, to keep you updated regarding any significant developments. In the meantime, the Department of Defense remains committed to countering violent extremist organizations in West Africa. The department will continue to support whole-of-government approaches to work with African leaders to maintain stability and address terrorist threats in the region, including addressing core issues that drive insecurity. All right, AP. Thanks, General Ryder. Um, back to AFRICOM. So it's almost 8 o'clock now in Niamey. Have you gotten any uh, readouts on how those initial meetings went? And uh, would this mean the complete total departure of all U.S. forces, or... Are some of those terms still be being negotiated? Yeah, I, I don't have a readout to provide. Of course, again, uh, we'll keep you updated uh, as, as things progress here. Um, and in, in terms of uh, the withdrawal of, of U.S. forces, again, I'm really not able to go beyond what I've provided right now, uh, which is that they will begin discussing the orderly withdrawal of, of U.S. forces. So uh, what that pertains in terms of timelines, numbers, again, we'll keep you updated. But is the assumption that it will be that all U.S. forces will go, or... Is, are there, is there still room? I think it? that's uh, a safe bet is the going in assumption. Okay. And then on Chad, um, similarly, have our U.S. forces withdrawing from Chad, and is this all of the U.S. forces there, um, approximately 100 or so, and, and why? Um, so as I understand it, as talks continue with 
uh, Chadian officials, U.S. AFRICOM is currently planning to reposition some U.S. military forces from Chad, a portion of which were already scheduled to depart. Uh, this is a temporary step as part of an ongoing review of our security cooperation, which will resume after Chad's May 6 presidential election. So again, we'll uh, keep you updated. I would refer you to the State Department to discuss you know, the, the diplomatic sides of this, uh, but that's where we stand right now. Uh, a follow-up on Niger and then a different question on, on Gaza and J-Lots. Uh, the withdrawal appears maybe not imminent, but at least fairly imminent. Niger was a critical base for AFRICOM ISR in monitoring violent extremist organizations. Does the Pentagon have a location to move those forces? And if so, is that location ready? Or, or are those forces for now coming back to the United States and, and there is no alternative to Niger? Yeah, well, as, as I highlighted, I mean, first of all, we are committed to countering VEOs in West Africa. And as you know, we do maintain a robust network of partners, uh, and we will continue to consider all options when it comes to accomplishing our, our CT mission. Um, you know, the bottom line is that we will continue to monitor threats uh, throughout the Sahel in order to protect our personnel, our assets, uh, and our interests, as well as the welfare of our partners. So we're going to continue to explore options, uh, understanding that, that this is an important uh, national security interest and a vital mission. How much is the CT mission set back without something like a Niger to stand to, to ready to go? Well, you know, certainly uh, when you look at the size of Africa and you when you look at the threats, uh, you know, the preference would be able to have uh, the ability to operate out of places like Niger. Um, but of course, we have other means and methods uh, that we can do that. So um, all that to say, again, we understand the, the importance of the CT mission uh, and we will explore options to ensure that we can continue to do that, albeit maybe perhaps through other means and methods, but importantly, working in close partnership with African partners in the region. It's worth noting that Chad is considered to be France's only hope for preserving its interests in the Sahel region and West Africa. However, the Biden administration is threatening this presence by seeking an alternative to the Agadez Air Base in Niger, which is considered a critical intelligence operational base and whose future is quite uncertain, since a process to withdraw U.S. troops from Niger has been initiated. In addition, France is facing growing feelings of hatred and resentment in the Sahel region, where the population accuses the former colonizer of being responsible for its suffering and the plundering of the region's wealth, and therefore a redeployment of American forces to Chad is considered to be a sensitive subject which could have significant consequences for France and its interests in the region.